Hello and welcome back to the AZ104 exam preparation series where we understand Microsoft Azure concepts by taking some sample practice questions. So we understand, we clear out the concepts in a question and answer format. And today we are going to focus on concepts like management groups, intro ID, subscriptions and related stuff. And as always, our approach is super simple. We take some Q&A, understand the Microsoft concept, prepare for the exam. And in this journey, I will also give you some Microsoft documentation. I will explain each concept with my own examples, analogies to help you facilitate, really develop as a cloud administrator. That is the objective of these videos. So let's not wait any further. Let's get started with the first question for today. So let's begin today's episode part 41 question number 231 and friends as I just said today's questions are specially crafted for you to understand different Azure concepts very important concepts on management group subscription intro ID but the only condition is that you listen to the questions very carefully maybe pause the video try to answer the questions yourself and then match up with the answers that I give. I will also give you the reasoning, the documentation. So please try and understand the Azure concepts. It will really help you become Azure administrator. Let's read the question. It says you have the Azure management groups as shown in the following table. Here we have tenant group, tenant root group. We have management group 1, 1, management group 1, 2 and management group 2, 1. You can also understand what is the in management group for all of these. Moving on, the question also gives you the information and it says that you add Azure subscriptions to the management groups as shown in the following table. So here we have two subscriptions. We have subscription one and the management group for the subscription one is management group two one and then we have subscription two which is under the management group one two so here you have to understand that we have multiple components first of all we have management groups we have subscriptions and the management groups associated or management groups on top of those subscriptions so that is what the information given so far Moving on, the question is telling you that you create Azure policies as shown in the following table. So here are policies, name of the policies, parameter, and then we also have the scope of the same. And based on all this information, my friends, you have to answer these statements. You have to tell whether these are true statement or false ones. So first of all, let's take the first statement here. It says that you can create virtual network in subscription one. Is it a true statement or a false statement? So for the true statement, you have to take this green uh, round circle here. And in case it's a false statement, then you have to select this orange circle here. The correct answer is that this is a wrong statement. So that is why no is the correct answer. And the reason is that virtual networks, they're not allowed at the root or the things that are inherited from the same. Now let's take the second statement. It says that you can create virtual network in subscription two. Yes or no? Well, this is a correct statement. So that's why yes is the correct answer. Now the virtual machines, they can actually be created on a management group provided the user has the required RBAC permissions. Moving on with the third statement here it says you can add subscription 1 to the management group 1 1 yes or no well this also my friends is a correct statement that's why yes is the correct answer. Now in order to understand all these statements and why we have chosen yes or no for the respective statements let's check out some of the documentation. So first thing first you have to understand what exactly is Azure Management Group and here I would first like to showcase you this uh, diagram here. So here you can see that first we have this tenant root group. Remember in the question we are given with the tenant root group and that one is not the management group for that one is not applicable. And then further down, we can see multiple management groups. We have Contoso, we have platform, landing zones, decommissioned and other ones as well. And then there are sub management groups as well. So you can see there is a hierarchy of management group. This is one first hierarchy or the first level. Then we have second one and then we have third one. And under all these management groups, we do have subscription, which are denoted by these yellow boxes. So that's the exact hierarchy of management group, subscription and tenant root group. Now let's read very briefly what exactly is the management group. So it says that if your organization has many subscription, 
you might need a way to efficiently manage access policies compliance for those subscriptions and management group provides a governance scope over the subscriptions so simply put in case you are working for a big organization or a company normally companies do have multiple subscription let's say that probably they are attached to multiple departments of the company one subscription could be for the hr other could be for the it the other could be for the finance now the companies always wants to have some governance over all these subscriptions and that's why they need a mechanism that sits over the subscription and give them a way to implement the policy is the you know a governance over all these subscription and that's where management groups comes into the picture and for example you can apply a policy to a management group that limits the region available for the virtual machine creation and this policy would be applicable to all the nested management groups and subscription and the resources to allow the virtual machine only be created in the authorized region so in case so in case my friends you're looking to apply or implement a policy on a let's say organization level or the management level then you can put all the policies on management group and then all these policies will descend down from management groups to the subscription to the resource group and further down to the resource level so that is the beauty of management group and how you can use the same then of course you can read some interesting facts about the uh, management group so we have single directory can support 10000 management group i don't think you will need more than that a management group tree can support up to 6 level of depths and then it says that each management group and the subscription only support one parent each management group can have uh, multiple children and all the subscription and the management group within a single hierarchy in the each directory why i am telling you all these facts because there can be multiple questions around all these concepts so individual questions can be created and we have of course taken multiple questions around all these facts uh, in the previous episodes so very important to understand uh, not just from the exam perspective but also when you are actually working on microsoft azure and one more documentation i would like to share with you is this one manage your azure subscription at scale with management groups so here you can again understand how exactly you can use the management group you can use the hierarchy of or the levels of the management group to govern all the policies in your organization wonderful concept really a good read to have and yes my friends do not miss to watch the previous two episodes of this series where i took multiple questions to explain the concepts that were really twisted but they will go a long way in your journey to become azure administrator and also give you loads of preparation for the easy 104 exam and of course do not miss to watch the next episodes where there will be a showdown of some more important azure concepts and practice questions moving on with the next question again we have yes no kind of question loads of information given in this question as well question number 232 it says that you have an azure subscription named subscription 1 now this subscription contains resources as shown in the following table we will come to this and you install the web server role ias on virtual machine and virtual machine 2 and then add virtual machine 1 and virtual machine 2 to the load balancer 1 so here we can see we have virtual machine 1 of course and virtual machine 2 both are virtual machines and lb1 is the load balancer and then in this picture you can see what is the configuration for the load balancer so here you can see what is the location of the same and what is the Uh, public ip which is used for a load balancer it's a very important concept we will come to this in just a little while but first let's understand what is the rule given here so it says that rule 1 is configured as shown in the rule 1 exhibit so here is the rule 1 uh, so now we can observe that this one the ip version is ipv4 uh, then we have this front end uh, ip address which is actually the same which is given here for the load balancer the protocol is tcp ip port is 80 back end port is again 80 then we are given with other information now based on all this information my friends we will try to answer Uh, whether these statements are correct or not so let's read the first statement it says virtual machine 1 is in the same availability set as virtual machine 2 so whether this is a correct statement yes or no 
well this is a correct statement so a basic load balancer which is in this case as well it actually supports the virtual machines in a single availability set or all virtual machines in a scale set then we have second statement that says if the probe one dot htm is present on the virtual machine one and virtual machine two then the load balancer one will be able to balance tcp port 80 between the virtual machine one and virtual machine two so what do you think it's a correct statement or uh, incorrect one so before answering this statement let me showcase you one small image here so here you can see that this image we can see this is the front end port which was also given here if you see on the left hand side and then we have a load balancer you can see this here load balancer and this load balancer which is on the front end or which is actually connected to the public ip address which is given here this is the public ip address now this load balancer is balancing the load or the incoming traffic to the multiple virtual machines and the back end port is also given which is port 80 and now coming to this statement here well this is also a correct statement so let me give you a little bit reasoning here see when you are using the load balancing rules with the azure load balancer you actually need to specify the health probes to allow the load balancer to detect the backend endpoint status and the configuration of these health probes and the probe response it actually determines which backend pool instances will receive the new flows and further you can use the health probes to detect the failure of an application or a backend endpoint and you can also generate custom responses to a health probe and use the health probe uh, for the flow control to manage the load or planned downtime so that is the functionality of load balancers my friends see the major reason why we use load balancers is that let's say that you have application which is deployed on virtual machines or multiple virtual machines or multiple servers now the load balancer is able to sense which virtual machine is good or in a good health or which server is in a good health and depending upon the health of the uh, virtual machine or server it redirects the incoming traffic so that is the purpose of load balancer and with that bit of information let's come to the third statement that says that if you delete the rule one which is given here load balancer one will balance all requests between virtual machine one and virtual machine two for all the ports so whether it's a correct statement or a incorrect one well this one is a incorrect statement that's why no is the correct answer and the reason is simple that if you delete this rule one the load balancer will cease to function and then there will be no load balancing between the virtual machine one and virtual machine two for all the ports and to better understand this azure load balancer concept you can read and understand this uh, documentation here i also had one more documentation which is this one and it will tell you everything about the azure load balancer health probes how it works what is it used for what are the use cases so please check out all the links for the documentation in the description box but for now let's jump on to the next question question number 233 that says that you have an azure subscription that contains a user named user one and you need to ensure that the user one can deploy virtual machines and manage virtual networks the solution must use the principle of least privilege please note this line must use the principle of least privilege now which role based access control or rbac role should you assign to the user one and your options are virtual machine contributor option b network contributor option c owner and the option d is contributor and the correct answer for the same is option b network contributor see the reason is that to actually ensure that the user one can deploy the virtual machines and also manage the virtual network in azure and that also with the least privilege possible you have to assign the user the role of network contributor actually you could have done it by the uh, owner role as well but now that we are talking about the least privilege that is why network contributor is a better option now let's move on to another very interesting but complex question here you can read this question uh, loads of information once again so it says that you have an azure subscription that contains the resource groups as shown in the following table so we have a resource group rg1 rg2 the lock on the rg1 is none no lock 
then on the rg2 we have lock and the lock type is delete so this is the lock type on rg2 now the question says that the rg1 contains the resources as shown in the following table this one here and you need to identify which resources you can move from rg1 to rg2 and which resources you can move from rg2 to rg1 which resource should you identify and to answer you have to select the appropriate options in the answer area so here you can also understand what are the resources available so here we have storage uh, storage account we have virtual network we have ip which is the ip address what are the lock uh, on these resources we have lock one here lock two and then on the ip we have no locks then we can see the lock type is delete and on the lock two which is on the virtual network it is the read only type of lock and then again once again none here now let's see this one here this is the actual answer area so we have to act tell according to the question what are the resources that you can move from rg1 to rg2 and vice versa so here it gives you the options like none ip1 only uh, ip1 and storage one ip1 and vnet1 virtual network then ip1 vnet1 and storage one only so let's check out the correct answer the correct answer would be this one ip1 and storage one so these are the resources that you can move from rg1 resource group one to resource group two so essentially you can move the ip address and the storage but you cannot move the virtual network coming to this box here it says what are the resources that you can move from rg2 to rg1 and here interestingly the answer is none and the reason is that there is a delete lock on rg2 so here you can see that we have delete lock here and when you apply a lock at the parent scope so we have a lock on the rg1 resource group then this lock is applicable on all the resources under the resource group or all the resources under that hierarchy or level and the interesting part is that even if you add the resources later in the resource group they will also inherit the lock from the parent so that's why my friends all the resources under the rg2 resource group 2 have the lock type delete that's why you cannot move them to the resource group one so that is why we have chosen none as the answer moving on with the next question question number 235 that says that you have an azure subscription that contains an storage account you plan to create azure container instances name container one that will use docker image named image one now this image contains ms sql server instance that requires persistent storage and you need to configure a storage service for container one what should you use and your options are azure blob storage option b azure files option c azure queue storage and option d azure table storage and the correct answer for the same is azure files option b so let me give you the reasoning behind the same let's first start with the azure blob storage see azure blob storage is typically used for storing large binary data and it is not suitable for this scenario as it can not be mounted on a drive which was also asked in the question so that is why it is not suitable or correct answer for this question coming to the azure queue storage this one is actually designed for storing large number of messages which is not relevant for the sql server storage needs and that's why this one also is not a correct answer coming to the azure table storage well azure table storage offers no sql storage but it does not actually provides the file system interface required for the sql server so that's why azure files is the right choice it also provides the persistent storage for the docker container running on the sql server in microsoft azure i hope you like the questions and understood the concepts that we discussed today i would love to have your feedback both good or bad please share them in the comment section and make sure to watch the previous and the next episodes of this series and also take advantage of our multiple other series both on microsoft azure and amazon ews certification and not only that we keep on releasing multiple videos on free exam vouchers free certification from all the tech giants in the industry and also the latest on generative ai and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching